Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me, Crafty Scrapper, here on YouTube and Instagram. Today I wanted to share something with you a little bit different. I'm putting on some gloves and we're going to get some mixed media going here. I've got some refill inks there. I've got some alcohol, just rubbing alcohol there in a spray bottle. Some in a bowl. I've got a brush that I'll be dipping into that bowl. And then um, my inkers that I had up there was Walnut Stain and Tea Dye. And then I've got some little mini Distress inks um, in various colors. You can see all the colors there. I don't end up using all of the colors, but I just had them there just in case. I've got my little mini uh, blending tool and got um, one of the blues there I think that might be salty ocean and then carved pumpkin and I'm just kind of putting them on my non-stick mat and that's uh, I think mowed grass mowed lawn whatever it is and then that is the fired brick and I've just put them on there they're the regular uh, distress inks not the oxides and then I'm just spraying that with some regular old water in a spray bottle that is um, cardstock that I use quite often it's the 110 pound it's all it is just regular old cardstock and there is the color I got from all of that color that was on that non-stick mat and I just loved it. I love how it's starting to run on there and I even hold it up there and let it run a little bit more and then go into what's left on the mat as far as the ink goes and I'm just kinda uh, rubbing it around and making sure I'm getting all of the other um, colors up and then I try to get really close to the edges to pick up the rest of that color that's on the mat and that way I don't have so much to clean up. Might as well put it on my page, huh? On my piece of cardstock. And that's just regular white cardstock. Um, not any kind of specialty watercolor paper or anything like that. We will work with some watercolor paper in just a minute, but that is just regular old cardstock. Then I've got um, some of the alcohol, the rubbing alcohol, and um, that is 91%, um, if anybody's wondering, uh, rubbing alcohol there. And then I had just dripped in a couple of drops of walnut stain into the alcohol. And then that's all that is, is just like, kind of like, I guess, quote unquote, alcohol water <laughs> that i um, splattering on that page just to see what kind of effect it's going to have and I really do like how this page turns out and we are not just um, creating pages today we are uh, creating something very special with these hand dyed um, papers that we are making today. Uh, I wanted to do something besides just coffee stain um, when I do my die cutting later. I wanted it to be quite colorful so I thought that this um, turned out uh, even better than expected. That is some of the tarnished brass um, spritz spray from Tim Holtz that I'm just splattering on there. It gives a really good effect. It shines um, wherever it's been dropped. That is some black soot, just regular Distress Ink black soot that I will be daubing on there. Um, just kind of splattering it and uh, here in a minute I try to um, make some intentional little spots because it's just not <laughs> going where I want it to go. So um, I'll intentionally touch the cardstock with the end of the barrel there in a minute but um, sometimes you just don't have the pattern paper that you want or the design paper that you want so you just kind of have to make your own and I love playing with ink and cardstock so um, this is right up my alley I know some just don't do this at all they don't like mixed media at all but um, I really do like it and I like making my own 
kind of um, background papers and things that um, you know you can die cut some pieces out of now this is some vintage photo oxide spray ink and instead of splattering it I am actually going to spray it on and that's going to take care of that um, all that white that's still showing up on that so see it gives it a nice dark brown and then I get my uh, rubbing alcohol that I've got in the spray bottle and I just kind of drip it around to see if I can get some little absence of color with that um, and it gave it a little bit of a different um, look to it but nothing major so um, I'm really doing all that for naught but just wanted to see if it would give it a little bit of absence of color and you can tell a little bit but um, the dried um, the dried paper later mm, very pretty okay so this is some glossy paper that is supposed to be um, painters paper um, I borrowed it from Bethany's <laughs> room I'm not too keen on it but it does give you a really good palette um, to make other papers with so I'm just kind of dobbing on the little mini inks onto it and then I get a paintbrush and um, go in to that um, oh I don't go into the alcohol I had sprayed that with water so that is the um, effect you're getting because see that's glossy paper so the water didn't absorb into it and so I'm just kind of going around and moving all that color around that I just daubed on there and um, this paper that I do with that really looks good so I'm spraying it again with water so that's going to lighten that color up again and I'm really really liking how this paper turns out after I um, get this cardstock into this so I'm just kind of daubing and getting all that trying to get some of it off of my paintbrush and then I will come in with a piece of cardstock another just plain white cardstock and I'm just gonna smash it into that so it's, see it's like doing it on the um, non-stick mat but I just had a uh, glossy piece of paper that I used as my little palette to start my inks on so there I'm going to just drip it on a little bit then this really gives this um, cardstock sheet a different uh, look I start pulling the ink off of the um, mat that I've got there that just kind of dripped off from that palette and from the other cardstock sheet that I did so I've got all this little bits of color all over this non-stick mat and I thought I'm not gonna waste this I'm gonna put it on this page and then you know we'll do some extra stuff to it but let's go ahead and get all this off of the um, <laughs> non-stick mat so I waste nothing y'all <laughs> I eventually wipe off the um, non-stick mat when I get this done but I am not wasting anything I am dabbing all of this um, extra ink that's on that mat onto my piece of cardstock so um, I hope that y'all like <laughs> these mixed media um, videos that I have been doing I'm just really loving playing with all this ink and getting inky uh, I have, have that uh, walnut stain ink um, in the spray bottle I have that and I'm just kind of splattering it on to give a little bit of effect but there's not that much on it um, in it as far as it's very diluted so um, I went with I had this paper towel it had ink all over it and I thought I'm gonna try something so I've just got that um, I think it's the grape one purple um, distress ink I can't remember the name of it right, right at this minute and I dabbed it onto the dry paper towel sprayed it with water 
and then I'm just kind of plopping it onto this cardstock and it reminds me did anybody in the 90s use a feather duster with paint on the end of it do you remember that do you remember feather dusting painting I did that to my bathroom ceiling y'all I used I used the feather duster, dipped it in paint, and then I did that to my ceiling in my bathroom when I was still at home. It was beautiful, I thought at the time, you know, in this mauve and country blue color. Or no, it was peach. Peach and country blue. <laughs> but this is what uh, that technique reminded me of, was using a feather duster in the 90s to do that paint effect. <laughs> So I've got the, um, um, I think that is Peacock Feathers. Uh, one before that was Marmalade. So I'm just kind of dabbing it, and I'm loving how it's looking. But then I'm thinking, okay, it's looking a little paisley, um, a little, um, uh, mm, you know, like Easter colors instead of, what I'm going for and that's fall color so um, I darken it up here in a minute but I really love this technique of putting the inks on a paper towel wetting the paper towel and then dabbing it I, I'm loving it so I think that was the carved pumpkin yes carved pumpkin and I'm just gonna kinda fill in little blank areas on that and <laughs> oh, I'm still thinking about me on a ladder <laughs> with <laughs> with a feather duster and paint on the end of it so now I'm about to um, put a little bit more water on the towel and <laughs> and I'm kind of squeezing the um, ink that's in that um, paper towel I'm going to squeeze it um, out on the page get a little bit more color to it and then I think hmm while it's drying I think I'm going to open this towel up which now looks tie-dyed it's just the coolest looking paper towel ever now and I open up the paper towel and lay it on the page hoping that I can get a little bit more intense color to this page and it does help a little bit um, but I'll do that in a second uh, I really like all the mingled colors look at that tie-dyed paper towel is that not the prettiest thing ever and I'll wet it just a little bit more <laughs> and lay it down on the page and then I set it aside to um, maybe get a little darker in color and dry a little bit and then here it is dried some and it is a little bit more intense color I'm liking that so there's the one that I, we did earlier and I decide this one needs a little bit darker colors and it needs some browns in it because we are doing some fall projects when we get these two pieces of cardstock finished and dried so I go in to that bowl with the walnut stain alcohol <laughs> rubbing alcohol in it and just kind of dab around with the paintbrush then of course I want some um, little speckles and splots and stuff so I go in with the oxide vintage photo and uh, just kinda splatter and touch here and there to give me some dark spots on this page so how many of you have since you've watched some of my ink splattering uh, projects how many of you have um, tried it out have you tried taking the barrel out and splattering your project or splattering your paper before you finish your project how many has tried that <laughs> y'all know that that is like one of my favorite things to do ever so um, you'll continue to see that in future 
videos, but I wanted to make something very unique with these papers. So just stick with me because you will see what I'm about to um, do with these papers. It's not just going to be cut into tags. This is not another master board video. I just did one of those, so we got we need some time in between, you know. That was some of that walnut uh, stain water that I just kind of sprinkled on there. And then I get the black soot out because I want to put a few dark spots on both corners just to kind of um, give another little effect, another look to this cardstock page. All right, then um, I'm thinking, do I want to spray it? Do I not? And I decide, nah, I'm not going to spray it with another color. So there's our two pages, and I'm really loving it. And somebody else might look at it and go, hmm, that's hot mess. But you'll see what I'm about to do with it. Okay, so with that second page, here we are again. Um, they have dried now, and I have got a Tim Holtz... Um, stencil, gracious, couldn't even think of the name, Tim Holtz stencil here, and uh, this one is the one called Burlap, and I've got my carved pumpkin distress ink, and I'm just filling in where there's white space, so just kind of willy-nilly, no real you know pattern to it I'm just filling in where there's white space if there's a lot of white on the paper I'm just going in and filling it in all right and then with the vintage photo oxide ink I go in and um, fill in all the extra little white spaces on this paper because what I'm about to make there you really don't see a lot of white ones so I need color. I need some nice fall colors for this project. So I'm very excited about this. I'm excited to, for y'all to see what happens next. All right, so I get out my big shot and um, we're going to die cut. I haven't done this in a long time. On video, I haven't done this in a long time. So there is some paper that I did some watercolor tags not too long ago. That's watercolor paper that I'm cutting right there. And I cut up our other two sheets. And I will link that watercolor tag video below so y'all can see that if you haven't already. This is a Stamp It Up um, leaf die. And I'm cutting this watercolor paper from that other video, and I'm going to cut out some leaves with all of this paper that we just hand dyed. So this is the watercolor paper from the other video that I'm cutting first. I've just kind of sped this up because, I mean, y'all know how to die cut, and this is just, I'm showing you what a few of them look like. And even if I have an off cut there at the top of the screen, you can see where I off cut. That's fine. You can use that on a project on the edge. Any of the space that I can't get a leaf out of, I'm using my little, um, I think that's a 5 8 inch punch, circle punch, and punching out a few circles because, you know, you can always use circles. So there's that um, thick die, the bigs die that I used from Stamp It Up. And then I have this little thinlets die that's these little leaves. Um, you can take them apart. I just leave it together. And um, there's, what, five on there. And I'm getting the little pieces of the paper that we just hand dyed. And running it through my big shot machine and making these little pretty leaves. I mean, these things are so pretty, y'all. I just love how this project has turned out and what I make out of them and I still have leaves left over. It's crazy. I find out with this die that if you turn it on the other side it will give you the veins of the die so that's what I was trying to show there and it's kind of blurry but um, it, sh it has the little veins on the leaves when you turn it that way. I thought that was so cute. So 
I'm going to finish cutting all of those papers and then look at all the leaves and then I went ahead and uh, distress inked them all around with walnut stain so all of those have already been distress inked yes I done that off camera I didn't want y'all to be bored to tears and then I have all the circles off to the right I did not ink the edges of all those cir or, yeah the edges of all those circles um, I just did all the leaves and even the little teeny tiny little leaves I walnut stained the edges of all of those and they turned out so pretty I will have a still shot at the end for you to look at up close and personal but oh my goodness it's just so pretty now I apologize for the coloring of the video right now I am wearing an orange shirt <laughs> and then you know all of our leaves are like browns and oranges and stuff so my video has an orange hue about it right now and um, that is the reflection of my orange shirt and then all of that brown and orange we got going on with the leaves so I've got some spellbinders acetate sheets here and I'm cutting them four inches by four inches and I'm going to make a little specimen card with this one leaf. This uh, big, uh, is that a maple? That's a maple leaf, right? Um, this one was my favorite one of all the maple leaves that I die cut out. It's got some reds and greens and it just, it really looks like a natural leaf to me that has um, really been through the mill as far as fall foliage. <laughs> And I'm putting some 1 8 inch score tape around the edge of um, that acetate. And then I will be covering that up so you won't be able to see where I've put the two pieces of acetate together. But we're going to put that leaf right in the center. And it's going to be our focal point for our little piece of ephemera that we're making for our journals. Um, now these... Um, projects that I'm making they can go in scrapbooks they can go in planners they can go um, you can use them as home decor it does not have to go in a journal um, art journal or junk junk journal um, can be used for all sorts of things now with this acetate I'm really having to make sure that I've got all of the fuzz and fingerprints and stuff like that off of it. I realize I need to put a tiny piece of tape on the back of this leaf so it doesn't fall when I put the two pieces of acetate together. So just a tiny piece of score tape on the back of that and then I line up my two pieces of acetate together and get my bone folder and sandwich those two together and there we have our leaf right in the middle for our specimen um, card that we're about to make and um, I get some let's see I think it's tea stain yeah it was tea stain paper with my tear ruler that's crooked so I'm having to fix that the paper that is um, I get my tear ruler and cut off four strips and I'm going to put them um, all around this leaf and be sure not to cover up the leaf and I'm just using my double-sided tape to go around the edge of this acetate sandwich I just made and putting on this coffee I mean um, tea stain paper all around the edges of this and yes this is sped up too because I mean, I was going so slow getting these projects done. This um, video would have been an hour and a half long if I wouldn't have sped it up. So I had to. I just had to do it. I'm getting all four corners glued down really well. And then um, I'm over the edge of the acetate some on the back. So I've got to trim that down. So I get my sticky scissors and trim all around the acetate. And then we're going to decorate the front and we're going to stamp on that. But I've always loved um, the specimen uh, card look that I've seen so many people on YouTube make. So 
I wanted to try my hand at it. And of course you could always make your border um, wider if you wanted to. I'm sitting there trying to contemplate on what I actually want to do. And so I grab a few of the circles that I had punched out and they look really cute on the edges. So I'm just thinking two on the bottom left edge and then I'll pick out one to go on that top right edge. <laughs> I'm very satisfied with that. I gave myself a thumbs up. I was very, <laughs> very satisfied with those circle placements. So um, two on the bottom, one on the top, and then I decide, mm, yeah, it needs some stamping. So I get a Felicity Jane stamp set. Um, I think this was from two autumns ago, probably, that I'm about to get out. So it's probably not available anymore, but it is a great fall uh, stamp set. And I get out one that says, um, I believe it says Autumn Blessings. And I get the Fired Brick Tim Holtz Mini Ink Pad. And I go ahead and stamp that on the bottom right beside those two circles. And it is just cute. I love it. I can see that um, poking out of a pocket or um, back behind a tiny little tuck on the edge of a page. So I'm very excited about that little specimen card we made there. And now this is just one of the maple leaves that we stamped, um, that we stamped, well we're about to stamp it, that we um, inked and cut out and then I just put on there um, hay fall I think it says hay fall hello fall or hay fall one of them and I just stamped it in black soot there on the bottom of that one and I'm sitting there thinking do I want to put something else on it do I not want to put something else on it and then I uh, say mm, that's enough I can journal on it or I can add more stuff to it later so that is one simple little thing you can do with um, leaves that you have created yourself and look, I think, very much um, like a natural um, leaf that you would find out in your lawn um, come fall. And we are, what, one day into fall now? at the recording of this video and uh, we're still warm here in Alabama but it it was cool this morning I actually had to take a jacket to go substitute teach this morning so that was that was something and yes for anybody that does not know I do substitute not as often as I really could because I'm called quite a bit but um, working at the shop and then doing videos and being a pastor's wife and a mama and a house to clean and all that. I just don't get to do it as much. Here I have cut out some, just tore out some book page and it is, um, I think it was four by four and then I'm cutting this piece of cardstock uh, four and a half by four and a half and I ink the book page, I've inked this piece of cardstock, and then I'm just going to mat that book page right on top of it. For anybody that does not know, I also sell Avon. <laughs> so I have that link in the description box below. Um, I also sing with the pilot family, my husband, my kids, and my sister. And we travel quite a bit. Um, we've been out of state quite a bit here lately singing. So um, I have my plate overflowing. It's not just full, it's overflowing. But I do like to help out the school system. And, you know, the school that I sub at is just like three miles down the road. So I like to help out whenever I can. I am adding 
uh, a little cluster of leaves there on that left top corner and um, I thought that looked so good I love that and then the back I'm leaving plain so I can journal on that I'm going to get that extra glue off of there I'm looking in my ephemera holder and I see that little butterfly and I decide mm, yeah that needs to be fussy cut out and added to the top of this little leaf cluster did y'all really think that y'all are going to get away and not see a butterfly <laughs> in my creating today nah here we go butterfly on the journaling card I just really love how that turned out it's just very pretty I love the torn eight torn ages torn edges of the book page and um with that ink all around it and then that butterfly up there on the top of it with its wings sticking off and I decide mm, this is going to be one that I'm not going to just adhere into the book I'm actually going to write on the back of this so just going ahead and ink in the back of that and I ink some of that butterfly so it's not just start white on the back too so pretty love that don't worry I'll show you an up close and personal pick of it at the very end next I get another small leaf and I pick out the stamp from that that same Felicity Jane uh, stamp set called sweater weather and uh, or the stamp name is called sweater weather not the stamp set collection name and I stamp that in the vintage photo oxide ink because I do have a little bit of dried spray on the back piece of that leaf so um, I want to make sure that the ink doesn't have any resistance so I use oxide on that one so tiny tiny but it says sweater weather I just thought that that would be very cute on a page there are our four little projects that we've made so far and then this last one is like my favorite of all I believe I just cut this um, piece of craft cardstock it's about mm, I don't know four and a half by five and a quarter or something like that I ink around the edges of it and then I have this um, stamp that says grateful from that same Felicity Jane set and I'm going to ink that up with my walnut stain and I'm going to go up some because I'm going to make myself a little grateful list a little gratitude list to go up underneath this and then cleaning off that stamp you know that's just me I gotta clean the stamp off I can't just let it go and clean later so then I get out a sharpie I decide against the whole gold full marker get out a black sharpie and I write four underneath grateful and then I get my leaves back out and line them up across the top I just love how that looks that is a very pretty look those speckledy leaves there at the top against that craft cardstock and then I'm giving myself a little uh, journaling card for the front I can journal on the front and I can journal on the back of this one because uh, in a minute I make myself some little lines to write out a few things I might be grateful for thought that was very cute I love 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 that project so I go over it again just to make sure make sure that the uh, sharpie showing up really good on that craft card stock there so look guys look at all the leaves I've still got left on this um, on my brand new um, mat look at that that my gray mat with the teal measurements on it that's brand new so you'll be seeing that more often and I won't wear an orange shirt so so that everything won't show up orange here I'm just I've slowed the video back down and I'm uh, laying out all the leaves just so y'all can get kind of an idea of 
what all I still have left. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, this quick one. I wanted to share all this with you. I didn't want later when I'm making my fall journal, y'all go, oh, where did all those leaves come from? How'd you do those? Here you go. <laughs> I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I will see y'all in the next video. Have a great day. Oh, yeah, and I'll be keeping my extra leaves in my ephem ephemera book. Bye. Y'all have a great day. God bless. <laughs>